You do get to a point where you, where, where you get too far or you take it too far where a woman will find it very difficult to say, well, I want you to put this on. In Thailand, it's still very difficult for a woman to bring it up because it's embarrassing. This is not just a for culture machista. De no querer, este, de querer que la mujer sea la que se proteja y el hombre no, ha, no, no hacer nada. You might use a condom for three, four weeks. It's sad that we have to negotiate it all, that it should be something understood by both people. I trust him so, and he trusts me, and he doesn't use a condom with me. If you can't be 100% sure, um, then that's a problem and you shouldn't stop using, uh, you know, protection. You cannot do a condom if you go to own life. How can you make children? Was what he lived in a meal. No more social by when gun, no more assistant down. They are telling me I must wear this. Then the divorce is there. Three decades into the AIDS pandemic, HIV has a new face. Now, at least half of the people infected with HIV each year are female. In Europe and the United States, the number of women with HIV AIDS increased by 25% in just two years. In Asia, one in every three people living with HIV is a woman. And in Africa, fully two-thirds of the HIV-infected youth are young women and girls. And there is now data to prove that within marriage, young women have less ability to negotiate protection than with their boyfriends. Men have much more control than women do over where, where, when, how, and with whom sex takes place. Under those circumstances then, it becomes very difficult for them to negotiate protection with their partners. When they have no economic leverage, they have no social status. Women urgently need a means within their control to protect themselves. A new innovation on the horizon could offer this hope. largest epidemic in human history. Some call it the single most important issue of our time. Future generations may well ask us, what did you do during the AIDS pandemic? Some may feel helpless. Others are angry. Meanwhile, 14,000 more people become HIV infected every day. Kimberly was 21, in college, and a member of a sorority. Little did she know that her boyfriend had HIV. The guy who gave it to me tell, told me, I love you, you can trust me. And I loved him, and I trusted him, and, and I thought, Oh, well, he's, he wouldn't lie to me. He, his parents are doctors and a and, and nice family, and he's sort of like me, so I think I'll be fine. And I trust it. Kimberly's story is far from unique. She is one of almost a million Americans living with HIV. Europe's problems are no less severe. The number of Western Europeans with HIV has doubled since 1995, with rates in Eastern Europe escalating even more rapidly. Other sexually transmitted infections are also on the rise, spreading fastest among teenagers. And women are more than twice as likely as men to become infected from unprotected sex. 
this simple gel known as a microbicide could change all that. Once available, vaginal microbicides will come in many forms. A gel or cream, a sponge, a water permeable film strip, a time release suppository, or an intravaginal ring that could be left in for months at a time. Some leads are contraceptive and some are not, giving women who want to get pregnant an important new option. The whole notion of microbicides was articulated by women, rural women, urban women, people all over the world, way before it sparked the imagination of scientists. And it was women saying, look, we need this, and we want you to work on this, that really mobilized and galvanized the community. A microbicide that women can use, which empowers them, which they can use, which is colorless, odorless, which doesn't have to be disclosed to male partners, it means that we can then target both sides of the, the sexual equation, men and women. After nearly 15 years in development, microbicides are enjoying the attention of the World Health Community. I'm here because I think the work in which you're collectively engaged, the discovery and availability of microbicides, is one of the great causes of this era, and I want to be a part of it. The phenomenon of women's acute vulnerability did not happen overnight. It grew relentlessly over the 20 years of the pandemic. What should shock us all, what should stop us in our tracks, is the simple reality of how long it took to focus the world on what was happening. Why wasn't the trend identified so much earlier? If we don't deal with gender equality, we'll never break the back of the pandemic, never. KwaZulu Natal province. Here, one in five adults is HIV positive. Thousands of children have lost their parents to AIDS. As in many societies, there are different expectations for women and men. A large part of a woman's role is to bear her husband's children. She can neither negotiate condoms nor refuse him even if she knows he's HIV positive. The <laughs> Throughout the world, women like Virginia are coming forward to join microbicides research studies. In Africa, strong leadership within the scientific and local communities move these complex trials forward. Scientists estimate that even a 60% effective microbicide could prevent 2.5 million HIV infections over three years in the developing world. But it will take increased funding and women like these to step forward to make that happen. For privacy, the names and faces of the women in these trials are never revealed. We cannot expect to defeat Goliath if all we have is a bare cupboard. So there's no question in my mind that a microbicide could have a real impact on this epidemic. It could have a signal response to this epidemic that will give us the confidence that we can really take this enemy on. 
not only will it protect me from HIV and AIDS, it will also give me a security to be in control of my life and have my key to open up doors for me in the future. It's always feel better if you know that there's a way that you can take care of yourself. Parent is in business, like HIV and AIDS, I'm a sickness. I would use it. Tala <laughs> <laughs>